Hey guys, so today is Wednesday the 6th of November and we're on our way to Kitana's regular vet that she's been seeing for the last five years. So today she's actually having a second surgery. Anyways, I will update you about everything when we get back home. Bye! Hey guys, so we're back home after dropping Kitana to the vets for her surgery. So I thought I'll do a quick update just so you know what's going on and why she needed a second surgery. So about a month ago, she developed an ulcer. Originally, we thought it was a hot spot because it really did look like a hot spot. And the vet actually thought she had cancer. But thankfully, all the tests came back negative that she didn't have cancer. So after about a couple of weeks of trying different antibiotics from oral and topical ones, several different ones, nothing seemed to work for her an ulcer. So she ended up getting a debridement surgery about 12 days ago. So a debridement surgery is to remove all damaged tissue. So that was 12 days ago and during that time she wasn't allowed to go for any walks or to the dog park because we we're worried about her stitches ripping apart and opening up the wound. So last Saturday we took her for a checkup just to check her stitches and she was in so much pain that she bit the vet. I couldn't believe it that she bit the vet. She has never bitten anyone in five years. She's never had any aggressive behavior, not even as a pup. She's never had to be muzzled and that was the first time that I had to muzzle her because I was worried about everyone else's safety around her. I didn't care if she bit me or Matthew, but she bit the vet. She didn't trust him near the wound and she was in so much pain. And when we opened it up, we realized her stitches have actually ripped apart and her wound was open. I have never seen her in that much pain to bite anyone and I was in tears on my way home. So um, after speaking to that vet, the local vet that she's been seeing for the last couple of weeks, he's recommended that we go for a, get a second opinion back with her regular vet. Because we thought originally it was just a hot spot, so we just took her to our local vet thinking that it was just a quick treatment. If I knew that it was this serious, I would have just taken her back to a regular vet. So um, I went and saw her. Reg sorry. So I went and saw her regular vet on Monday, and after he had a look at the wounds, we have realised how many wounds she's actually got. So I've had to wrap up quite a few of them, and I haven't opened it up because I was worried about her chewing it and also it getting worse if she's bumped into anything. So she's got on her front paw is the big, huge one that she's had the surgery. Then she's also got one little one also on that paw. On her back left paw, she's actually got four. And on her other front right paw, she's got one. And then she's also got wounds on her ears that are actually ulcers and on the tip of her nose as well. So all together, she's got about 10 ulcers. So that's why we've had to drop her off at the vets today for her surgery, just to re-stitch up that wound that's opened up. He said he's also going to do another debridement, so again, getting rid of all the damaged tissue. He might also get some off the back left paw as well. So. Um, I dropped her off around 12 o'clock. I got to stay with her while she got her sedation, um, the um, injection that she got to sedate her. And um, once she was completely sedated, I helped the vet lift her up on the surgery table. And then once she was all set up, I left. So right now it's about one o'clock that we've just got back home. And I have to call back around four o'clock just to check how she's doing. Because she's under anesthetic, I'm very worried because of all her breathing problems that's why with her last surgery she was only under sedation not under anesthetic so um, 
after that I have to call at 4 o'clock to check on her just to see how she's going and if she's waking up from her anesthetic I'm allowed to go pick her up I'm not going to stress her out and leave her there overnight it's better for me to bring her home and make her feel comfortable while I was trying to get her into the vets she was crying so much she refused to even get into my car because she knew she was going to the vets if all the dogs are inside she knows she's going to the dog park if she comes inside by herself and gets into the car without any other dogs she knows she's going to the vet so she cried the whole way she cried while she was there and while she was having the sedation it took about 10 to 15 minutes to completely work on her and during that whole time she's trying to escape as she's collapsing to the floor my poor baby girl I'm praying that everything goes well with her surgery and this is the answer the vet said that if this surgery doesn't work the next step is to get samples of the wounds and send it off for testing I'm hoping we do not get to that point I'm hoping these um, surgeries that she's getting this second surgery works Anyways, it's about um, one o'clock as I said. I haven't eaten anything. I've been so stressed out from I mean, sorry, I've been so stressed out about Kitana. My words are not even making sense. I struggled to sleep last night thinking of her having this surgery and um, so I better go eat something. I've noticed over the last month since we've been dealing with so much with Kitana that my milk supply has gone down so much I'm not making as much milk so I really need to start eating and drinking more and looking after myself so I can look after Kitana and Caleb as well with um, producing breast milk I really don't want to get him on formula on Monday he actually turned four months old and with everything going on I didn't even realize that he turned four months old everything has been so stressful lately and to add to that last Friday I found out from Jacob's teacher that Jacob's been having trouble with his hearing um, apparently it's been going on for about a couple of months but he's never really mentioned anything until his teacher did he thought he'll get in trouble for mentioning that he's having hearing problems so he's only just started swimming over the last couple of weeks so we're not too sure if it's that we took him to the doctors on Saturday his ears are completely clear so we have to go and do a hearing test for him which I can't book in anything until January or so because a lot of them they have a long waiting list the number that the doctor actually gave me they do not do it for any kids under 12 so I need to find somewhere else that they can do it from birth to 18 so that Jacob's eight years old now uh, just so much going on anyways um, I'm just stressing myself out thinking about everything that's going on I better go inside eat something feed Caleb and then at three o'clock I gotta go pick up Jacob and then at four o'clock I gotta call the vets so anyways I will record us going to pick up Kitana and I'll film her and everything and update you on everything how everything went with the surgery anyways I will talk to you later bye Hey guys, so I just got a call from Kitana's vet. Everything went well with her surgery and she's woken up from the anesthetic, so time to go pick her up. Bye! Hey guys, so we're back home after picking up Kitana from the vets. Everything went well with her surgery. I spoke to her vet, which was actually her vet surgeon as well. And he said that he had to debride all three pores. So from her front two and her back one. So all together, there was about seven ulcers. He said some of them were really deep, especially the surgery site where he had to pack the wound as well. So there are a lot of stitches and he knows that he's not going to be able to remove her stitches unless she's under anesthetic or a muzzle and everything which will be very stressful for her so he lets me remove the stitches on my own so um, to make it a little bit easy for me he did put a lot of the dissolvable stitches and the ones that need to be removed he can tell me which ones they are and I can remove it um, at home by myself just to make her a bit more comfortable because every time when they've tried to touch her wounds she just doesn't let them do anything and now that she's biting I'm scared that she's gonna bite everyone and I don't want to stress her out with the muzzle where at home I don't have to muzzle her and she'll let me do her dressings and remove her stitches I have removed her stitches in the past when it came to a fracture back in March and I do it at work as well 
I am a nurse so I've been doing it for years and I've been looking after ulcers as well so I kind of know what I'm doing and also her vet just talked me through everything what to do so we also got her a cone a new one because she destroyed her last one so hopefully her surgery sites will be fine and she's not going to get to it so once again for the next couple of weeks she's not going to be able to do any exercise not going to the dog park not going for walks or anything so hopefully um, this time the surgery ends up being successful also her vet took samples of all the different debridements that he did take he said some of them were necrotic so necrotic means um, dead tissue so that's quite scary to know that she's got some necrotic tissue so um, with that being said he sent off some samples to a pathology lab so he can get them tested so we know exactly what we're dealing with because it's not something normal that you get necrotic tissue from ulcers like that. It usually happens when there is something going on and we know obviously Kitana's got really bad health and um, so we don't exactly know what we're dealing with and what's causing the ulcers. It would kind of make sense if it was only one paw but now it's spreading to her back paw, her other paw. So three out of four paws have ulcers plus on her ears and her nose as well. All together there's ten and we need to know what causing it and how to fix the problem um, the only thing that would really work is getting her off the prednisone which she's been on for four and a half years but it is a lose-lose battle with her so it's either a quick death in the next couple of months with getting her off prednisone or at least trying to make her comfortable and live as long as she can we are not ready to lose her yet so we're not going to give up we're gonna con we're gonna continue fighting until the end isn't that right Tammy's so anyways, um, we better go inside and get her to rest and then I'm pretty sure Dash, Letty and Leans are probably going to be really excited to see her. They haven't seen her since this morning when I took her out to pee and poop before we went to the vets. So um, yeah, we'll see how everything goes and on Tuesday hopefully we should have the results from the pathology. He said if he doesn't get the results by then and doesn't call me, then I have to call him to find out if he's got all the results and then we can bring her in for a checkup. He said not to open the wounds either, unless she destroys it then do it, if not we're trying to keep the infection out or make sure she doesn't get any more infections. So it looks like Kitana is going to be coned quite a lot. I'm so sorry my beautiful girl, she's just laying next to me and she's not allowed to have a big meal today either and she's going to be very upset with me when we went to pick her up we went to into the consult room just to speak to the vet for a little while before um, we go and get her out and get her into the car because it's really hot we're almost in summer right now it says 31 degrees in my car so i'm trying to quickly finish this off so we can go inside it's quite cool in my car because i had the air conditioning on so um yeah we didn't want to get her out straight away because i know how anxious she gets when she sees us so he just wanted to explain everything about the surgery and everything and what's the next step so um, we could just hear her in the background just howling and barking and then howling and barking apparently since she's woken up from her anesthetic she's been telling off everyone that's come near her so she also told me off and Matthew off because Matthew came after work to come with me to pick her up and um, yeah so anyways I better go inside it's about 5 40 now we're gonna go cook dinner relax with Tammy's and hopefully bring the other dogs to see her if she gets really stressed out we'll probably put Dash, Letty and Leans back outside or if not we can probably put them in um, actually put Kitana in our room or Jacob and Isaac's room down the hallway and shut the door while the other dogs can enjoy the air conditioning anyways I will talk to you later bye
baby. Oh, I think Miss Kimmy's. Kimmy's teleport. Did she teleport? Yeah, Kimmy. Where did she teleport to? I want the doctor. At the doctor? Is that what they said? Yeah, they need to be careful. Oh, she did not teleport. Oh, she did not teleport. Yeah. Don't worry, please. Kitan's wounds checked to see if it's healing properly. Bye! Hey guys, so today is Thursday the 5th of December and we're on our way to Kitana's weekly vet visit. So anyways, I will update you about everything when we get back home. Hey guys, so we're back home after Kitana's vet visit. So when the vet took off her dressings from her three paws, we have noticed that her ulcers are about 50 to 70% better. Some of the surgery sites where she had the stitches, they are about 90% better. But we do also have some bad news. On her back left paw, she's actually developed another two ulcers this week. So the reason that she's getting all these ulcers is the prednisolin. So last week we got the results from her surgery, the samples that they sent off. It is a microbacterial infection and the vet thinks it's caused from the long-term use of prednisolin. So Kitana's been on prednisolin for about four and a half years of her life. She's always been on 20 milligrams and this is all the problems that are coming from the prednisolin. And the reason we cannot get her off the drug is because she ends up with really bad pneumonia and without the prednisolin she will end up dying because she can't fight the infection because the vet also thinks she's got COPD which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so she's also on bronchodilators and the vet also thinks she's got an autoimmune disease and also she's got corneal oedema so she's on corticosteroid eye drops as well so she's on a lot of steroids and this is what's causing all these issues 
So she was always on 20 milligrams, as I was saying, for about four and a half years of her life. We have brought her down to 15 milligrams. I thought this is the best time to maybe slowly wean her off the drug or at least reduce the dose if we can't get her off it completely because we're getting so many problems from it and either way she's going to be dying from some sort of side effect from it so i'm just hoping these ulcers do not take over because if she's in a lot of pain i just can't bear to put her through this she can't do all the normal things that a dog does she can't go for walks she can't go to the dog park she has to be stuck inside she's not allowed to play rough she ends up with um, fractures because of the side effects from the prednisolone because it weakens the bone it also weakens the skin and makes it really thin so she's just got issue after issue after issue and it is a losing battle with Kitana so at the moment she's still banned from walks I did take her to the dog park last week once or twice and I just made her lay next to me just so she can get out of the house and she has not been on walks for a good six to eight weeks now her original surgery she did have on the 25th of October and her other surgery was on the 6th of November so tomorrow it will be one month since she's had her surgery and most of it is going well it's just the new ulcers that are developing and also she's getting pressure sores as well which is hard because we need to keep them wrapped up so at the moment the vet has recommended her front right paw is looking really good so I can actually keep it off from the bandages. Um, also we have to cone her so she doesn't start licking it and it doesn't get worse or get infected. And for the last two to three weeks she's been on 15 milligrams from 20 milligrams of the prednisolin. So we have given her three quarters of her regular dose. She's doing really well, no breathing problems or issues have arised at the moment but she's also been on antibiotics for about six to eight weeks now so that could also be the reason that we haven't noticed anything the real test will be when she gets off the antibiotics but it doesn't look like she's going to be getting off the antibiotics anytime soon so that's kind of good news for us that we can probably lower the dose and hopefully that will help with the healing process as prednisolin slows down the, um, the wound healing so that's our main issue is at the moment to deal with her ulcers so um, I need to get her inside and do her dressings of course I've been showing the last three to four weeks of her wounds so you can see what her wounds look like now and you can see it from the before and after um, little clips from this video of what her wounds originally look like post-op surgery before surgery and how it's been healing over the last couple of weeks so anyways, I better get inside. I also got to feed Caleb, um, give Isaac breakfast. It's almost 11 o'clock and we've just got back from the vets because I thought I'll leave straight away so we can get that over and done with in the morning because I did notice she started limping, not yesterday, the day before. And after doing her dressing, she's still limping and seeing all those new ulcers a couple of days ago developing, I really wanted to get her to the vets. So um, anyways, I better get inside. I will talk to you later and I will probably update you in another vlog with how Kitana's going. Let me know if you're enjoying looking at her wound and how it's healing because I can do another one maybe next month and you can see all the difference with her wound healing over the next month or so. If not, I will still document it for my own sake even if I don't put it on YouTube. I just want to make sure she's um, developing well and it's all healing. I'm really enjoying seeing these pictures because Seeing her wounds heal is the best news for me, but then seeing all the old ones and the new ones developing, um, that's where it's all going downhill for me. But at least I know what it looks like last week, the week before pre-surgery and post-surgery. So in this way, as much as I really didn't want to be making this vlog, I'm happy that I did because I get to see the difference with her wound, if it is healing, if it's getting worse. Anyways, I'm not making any sense. I'm probably not. I'm just really exhausted and tired and stressed. Anyways, so I've said that quite a few times, so I will talk to you later. Bye.